My name is Wendy Patrick, and we're working through the Prodigal Son devotional series. In this one, we're going to examine signs of spiritual lostness. We're still in Luke chapter 15. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of his servants and asked what was going on. Your brother has come home, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, look, all these years I've been slaving for you and have never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. In this parable, Jesus shows us two different conditions of spiritual lostness, the obvious condition of the younger son and the silent killer nature of the spiritual lostness of the older son. The clues Jesus gives us to the condition of the older brother in this parable include his refusal to go into the party and celebrate the return of his younger brother. What is keeping him out? Listen to what he says in verse 29. All these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed. The good son is not lost despite his good behavior, but in spite of his good behavior. It's not sin keeping him out, but his righteousness keeping him out. Imagine that. How does righteousness make the older son lost? Because it was self-righteousness. The younger brother wanted the father's wealth, but not the father. How did he get what he wanted? He asked for his inheritance early and then left home and spent it. He broke the moral and social rules of the time. But we see in the parable that the older brother also wanted selfish control over the father's wealth. He was distressed over what the father did for the younger son, the robe, the ring, the fatted calf. He was thinking, hey, those things belong to me now. Your younger son squandered his share of the property. That stuff should be mine. That ring, probably an expensive ring, bearing the family seal was probably worth a lot of money. The older brother figured that it will probably end up in a pawn shop. And the finest robe which a father called for was probably the father's best robe. So because the younger son's portion of the estate is gone, who do all these expensive things belong to? The older brother probably figured they belonged to him. While the younger brother got the control he was after by taking his things and running away, we see the older brother got control by staying home and following the rules. He felt that he had earned the right to tell the father what to do with his possessions because he had obeyed him perfectly. The older brother's moral observance is results-oriented. He was trying to control his life through his performance. So we see here that there are two ways to disregard what Jesus did for you on the cross. One is by keeping all the laws and being good, by thinking that you can be so good that God has to answer your prayers and give you a good life because you earned it. You are looking to Jesus to give you your rewards, but you aren't living with Jesus as your savior. Have any of you ever done that? Try to work your way into acceptance. We should be rejoicing that we don't have to do that because none of us could ever achieve that. Thankfully, in Christ, we have grace. Let us thank him for that every day. Lord, thank you for your extraordinary, extravagant love for us and your grace, for your understanding, forgiveness, and lavish gifts that you love to bestow. As we meditate on this parable, please show each of us any signs and symptoms of lostness in our own lives so we may pray for your forgiveness and cleansing in order to begin a fresh start.